Good evening. More than 130 people marched through Lewis today, bringing a halt to traffic to protest against proposed cuts to bus services. East Sussex County Council wants to change some routes to save money, but campaigners claim it could lead to isolation for vulnerable people and those living in rural parts of the county. Victoria Holland reports. At 85 years old, Miriam Scheel is hugely reliant on her bus to do her shopping in Lewis. She says proposed changes to the services could have a huge impact on pensioners like her. Oh, I use the bus every day, actually. And when you're older, elderly, you know, um, you need to get out. Otherwise, you just get depressed. East Sussex County Council is proposing changes to around 40 services, with some having reduced frequency and some being axed altogether. Campaigners say these changes, along with an increase in fares, is a concern. Not only is it making the fares go up, it's cutting the services in half or worse. There were around 130 people at today's protest of all ages. The group marched up the high street to County Hall to hand in a petition of over 7,000 signatures. East Sussex County Council says the changes could save £1.8 million. The proposals will next be discussed at a meeting on December the 16th. Victoria Holland, BBC South East Today, Lewis. Campaigning ahead of the by-election in Rochester and Stroud has continued today. The Green MEP for South East England joined his party's campaign ahead of the vote on November the 20th. What we're doing in standing in every by-election is giving people an opportunity to vote, to say, look, We've had enough of this austerity measures. We've had enough of uh, minimum wages you can't live on. We've had enough of expensive rail fares. For a full list of candidates taking part in the by-election, log on to our website, bbc.co.uk slash Kent. We've put all of our coverage so far on our Facebook page. You can also have your say about the issues raised on Twitter using the hashtag RSVote. And it's now less than two weeks until the people of Rochester and Stroud will get the chance to vote in this crucial by-election. It's been called the most important by-election for a generation. It is the battle for Rochester and Stroud and it takes place here on the 20th of November. Good morning. And what the voters of these Medway towns decide could signal a major change in British politics. It's been turned into a bit of a war ground, really. People are taking more interest and they think local issues are going to be, you know, dealt with now. It's a waste of public funds and a gimmick. BBC South East will be hosting a special programme to be broadcast on the 10th of November in which voters will get their chance oh, to question candidates in the by-election. Oh, yay! Welcome! To Rochester! Join me here at Rochester's historic Corn Exchange for the battle for Rochester and Stroud. The programme is on at 10.35pm on Monday night here on BBC One, as well as the BBC News Channel and also BBC Radio Kent. On to football now, and it was a great day for our non-league sides in the first round of the FA Cup. Dartford beat Bromley 4-3, while Dover beat Morecambe 1-0. But it wasn't good news for our league sides in the Cup, with both Gilliam and Crawley Town losing. Maidstone are playing Stevenage tomorrow. Meanwhile, in the Championship, Brighton and Hove Albion drew one all with Blackburn, and Charlton beat Reading 1-0. Right, let's get all the weather details now with Wendy Harrell. Good evening. If you haven't yet seen the rain, it's on its way. It's also, of course, turned windy through the day, and that's not a great combination for fireworks this evening. On the radar picture, you can see the rain as it's crossed the country, and some of it has been quite heavy. So through this evening, as the rain starts to arrive, the Met Office has us covered by yellow weather warnings, because in places we could end up with some rather large puddles and certainly some spray on the roads, difficult driving conditions. Some gusty winds accompany that right the way through the night into the early hours of the morning when they start to ease off. Temperatures will hold at between 8 and 11 degrees and then we'll wake up to some of that rain still clearing towards the east but eventually it will move away from us. It means for Remembrance Sunday events there should be dry sunny weather, just one or two showers scattered around into the afternoon with a high of 13 degrees. Fine generally on Monday, unsettled though through the week. And that is it from us for now. We're back at quarter past six tomorrow evening. Hope you can join us then. Bye bye for now. <laughs>